A few days ago, Amitabh Kant, the CEO of the Niti Aayog, said the government planned to bring down production costs of green hydrogen from five to six dollars per kg to one dollar per kg as an incentive for businesses to shift to a cleaner fuel. So, what is green hydrogen, and why are big industrial players and the Indian government focusing on it? Unlike petrol or diesel, green hydrogen releases no carbon emissions when it's combusted and is truly considered renewable when its production relies on an energy source like solar or wind energy. Hydrogen is a colorless, odorless gas that has several industrial uses, like in petroleum refining, aerospace applications, and the manufacturing of chemicals, steel, and ammonia fertilizers. Green hydrogen refers to the process of how it's produced, which is through electrolysis. Electrolysis involves running a current through a liquid, in this case water, to break down that chemical compound. Green means the energy used to produce the hydrogen is renewable. There are other ways to make hydrogen, but they either require fossil fuels or release greenhouse gases during production, making it unsustainable. Each method is denoted by a color. For example, brown hydrogen is hydrogen that's extracted through the gasification of coal. Gray hydrogen, is, which is the most common, is produced through a process called steam methane reformation. In SMR, as it's called, methane from natural gas is heated with steam and it produces carbon dioxide and hydrogen, which can then be used as a fuel. Both these methods release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. There's also blue hydrogen, which uses the same production method as grey hydrogen, but captures the carbon dioxide before it's released into the atmosphere and stores it elsewhere, making it a little more carbon friendly. Producing green hydrogen is expensive because scaling up the electrolysis process is expensive. But the government is now showing an interest in bringing down the costs of production. This is important also because India is currently the third largest emitter of carbon dioxide in the world. In February this year, the government announced the Green Hydrogen Policy, a scheme to make investments to green hydrogen production more lucrative. The policy includes waivers on interstate transmission charges for 25 years. What this means is that interstate transmission charges won't apply if a producer wants to set up a solar plant in one state to power a green hydrogen plant in another state. These waivers, according to the policy document, can be availed by producers who set up green hydrogen plants in the country before July 2025. It also promises to give manufacturers of green hydrogen or ammonia connectivity to the grid on a priority basis and to set up a single window clearance process to avoid any delays. Since the Prime Minister announced the green hydrogen mission last year, there's been a lot of interest by industry stakeholders. The mission aims to make India the world's largest exporter of green hydrogen by producing 5 million tons of it by 2030. The state-owned Indian Oil Corporation Limited had announced last July that it would set up the country's first green hydrogen plant. Reliance Energy followed, saying it would invest $10 billion in green hydrogen and other renewable energy sources. Then, in November 2021, the Adani Group also announced that it would invest $70 billion in renewable energy infrastructure, including green hydrogen, by 2030. Larsen & Tubro Limited had also announced plans to invest in green hydrogen, joining hands with Renew Power. In April this year, a study by the Council on Energy, Environment and Water said steel made from green hydrogen is currently 60 to 70 percent more expensive than existing methods, but just a 9 percent blend of green hydrogen could achieve a 60 percent reduction in emissions, with break-even and an upper range of blast furnace costs today. Steel is among the most fossil fuel intensive industries. Decarbonizing our industries could mean reducing our carbon emissions and also gives India a shot at achieving its goal of ensuring 50% of its energy requirements are met through renewable energy sources. This is Simran Sirur for The Print. Do follow us on social media and subscribe for more videos like this one.